okay scary stuff we're on the real piano today my uh, acoustic upright for reasons I'll talk about in a second um, it's been ages and ages and ages since I made a tutorial uh, and I'm sorry about that things have been madly busy recently for the past you know past couple of months really um, so I want to get back into things today by talking about the um, sometimes tricky issue of fingering and how we use our fingers on the piano to get ourselves efficiently and smoothly up and down the keyboard okay now if you like a lot of people who watch the channel are a self-taught piano player or you've had a few lessons or lessons were a very long time ago getting your fingers organized might be something that you struggle with okay and if you don't get your fingers particularly well organized your, your piano playing will always risk sounding a little bit clunky and, and uneven even if you're playing jazz or blues or pop or, or whatever genre generally people who have had more classical lessons especially when they were young are better at getting their fingers sorted out because classical piano is absolutely unforgiving of you if you don't sort out your fingers and make sensible decisions about how to use them. Now, you know, obviously I, I can't give you a sort of a whole how to play classical piano from scratch uh, course in one short video, but what I can do, what I'm going to do today, is look at a piece of classical piano music that has some quite interesting fingering in it and then look at how we can take some of those ideas and apply them to our own playing. Now the piece I'm going to look at, um, well it's just an extract of the piece, I'm going to look at the first two pages of the Intermezzo in A Major by Johannes Brahms from his six piano pieces, Opus 118. Uh, and I've chosen this because um, it does have quite a few really interesting bits and pieces of, uh, of finger work in it. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to play the first couple of pages um, probably quite inexpertly because uh, I'm not that great of a classical player, but then reel back through, um, through what I've played and explain some of, the, some of the more interesting moves. As I play, watch what I'm doing and try to spot some of the um, more sort of extreme and exotic finger movements that I do. Okay, here we go. that without too many mistakes one or two little splashes in there but enough to show you how the piece worked okay so if you've had a few basic piano lessons or if you've taught yourself from a book you'll probably know some fairly elementary finger movements okay so for example let's say we're playing the scale of C major <laughs> that with 
five fingers, I've only got five fingers in my right hand, but I've got far more than, than five notes to play. So moving my fingers under and over one another means that I can play all of those notes up and down without taking my hands off the keyboard. Yeah? So, thumb under, thumb under, thumb under, finger over, finger over, finger over. Yeah? That might seem like a lot of fuss and palaver, but it's really important. Yeah? Not taking our hands off the keyboard too much enables us to be smooth, or legato, to use a technical term. It also means that we reduce the risk of playing wrong notes when we slip. If you take your hand off and on the piano keyboard a lot, you're more likely when you reposition it to hit a, a you know a slightly bum note to make to use the term pianist used to make a splash. Okay, play slightly the wrong note. So using our fingers and moving them over and under one another can help us move smoothly and accurately up and down the piano keyboard. So whatever genre we're playing in, whether it's classical, whether it's jazz, blues, pop, whatever, using our fingers like that is, can be a real help. Now, it, it, as I say, if you've had those basic lessons, you will have learnt the basic thumb over, finger over technique, thumb under, finger over technique. Yeah. What we saw in that little bit of Brahms there was much more advanced finger management and I just want to look at some of the techniques that Brahms forces you to use because it's all stuff that we can bring to our own playing. So for example, first example, very early on in the piece we see this in the right hand. And it's those last three positions that I'm interested in. Yeah, we're going from F sharp and D to C sharp and A, to B and G sharp. Now, if I wanted to, I could just jump between those three and stick the resulting sound together with the pedal if I was really quick on the sustain pedal. So that's smooth-ish. It's quite hard to get it right on the piano, on, on the pedal. But it relies on me getting my fingers in exactly the right place while I'm concentrating on my left hand at the same time, yeah? So, if we can do it in some way without taking our hand off the piano, it's going to be much easier. And that's what we do. See what I did there? I've got thumb and fourth. When I'm moving to the C sharp and A, I take my fourth off and hit the C sharp and A. There. And then I'm in position, ready for the B and G sharp. Yeah? I want to use a couple of... Um, sport analogies here. It's a little bit, if, if, what I was doing there, if you're playing basketball or netball and you, you've got hold of the ball and you're not allowed to move, you're only allowed to pivot on one leg, that's what, similar to what I'm doing there. Coming off, pivoting on my thumb, and then I'm in position to shoot for that final chord. Yeah. Okay, now, obviously, when I'm coming down, I've got to take that D off to come here, so for a little while only the F sharp is sounding. That's not what not, that isn't written in the music. You know, I've got F sharp and D, C sharp and A. So that D, strictly speaking, shouldn't come off, but it's got to come off. So what I do is use the pedal just to, to, to sustain it. So although I'm not playing exactly what's written in the score, I'm creating the illusion of those coming down smoothly. So that's the first thing you can do. If you've got two chords in different positions, don't assume you have to take your hand off the piano in order to play them, okay? Yeah, you can move around in all kinds of ways between chords by keeping one note held on, moving your other fingers, okay? And, um, you know, I'm just thinking of positions I can go for here. <laughs> Move your other fingers and sticking things together with the sustain pedal. It needs close coordination, but it's not super difficult to do. Okay. Okay. Let's look at another really quite interesting bit. And this is actually a, a, a question that people ask me. After that little sequence, we go on to another sequence, which goes like this. Again, there's some interesting moving over there. We'll look at that in a second. But look at what, at what happened in the right. Yeah? I'm 
hitting two notes with my thumb, yeah? I couldn't, unless I had huge sort of Rachmaninoff fingers, I couldn't play that any other way. I, you know, I could just about stretch that, but that would risk hitting the C and making a really bad uh, splash. So it's absolutely fine, in answer to the question that hundreds of people have asked me, it's absolutely fine, if you have to, to play two notes with one finger at the same time, yeah? Look at what was going on on the left there. Okay, a really big leap over. Yeah, I got from the D sharp to the B. Now, instead of jumping, which would risk inaccuracy, I can heave my fourth and second fingers over. Okay, it's a bit of a stretch, it needs a bit of practice. Okay, and do it all smoothly. When you're doing stuff like that, you really have to get into the business of moving your arm. I'm not going to make a video about that because I've got weird arms and my bone structure is quite odd, so I'm not like the rest of you. I'm kind of freaky. But you can make things smoother. Sometimes when you're doing that, you have to make a little bit of a jump. Yeah, but it's still smoother than coming off. Okay. Um, Next little example I want to look at is of what we call finger switching, and that happens a little bit later in the piece. Although there are several finger switches, but the real, the really crazy one happens a, a little bit later um, in this section. Let's see if I can just pick it up here. And here it comes. You see what I did there, just in the right hand. So I had to get from this position to holding those notes down and hitting that B with my fifth, but then come smoothly down here. So in effect, I had to get from this position to this position, but without lifting those two notes off the keyboard. Okay, so, um, you know, they were down, I didn't want to lift them up. So what I did was a finger switch. Okay, that thumb comes off, moves there to hold that note down, these two swap, and I'm up there. Yeah, it takes a little bit of practice, but it's not super difficult. And you can, you can do it reasonably quickly. Um, where am I? Whoops, that's not right. Um, okay, so quite swift there. Whoops. <laughs> Finger switching is often a very useful technique, especially in things like jazz when you're trying to create quite sort of um, elaborate improvisations and hold different notes down. Yeah, so that's a finger switch, another kind of useful little technique. Um, the other thing you can do is more extreme and exotic moving of fingers over. Yeah, and, and that happens um, a few bars later in the piece where we get this. Um, going over with my fourth, yeah, which seems crazy, whoa, how do I get over there, and once you move over with your fourth, you know, you can, uh, you know, just straighten your hand up again. That's a very useful thing to do if you found yourself improvising, and oh dear, I'm up here, I want to go higher, but I've run out of fingers, I just want to hit, the, you know, the next note up. Again, you can really get into sort of spider monkey territory and, and really rearrange your hands. But it's quite a quite legitimate thing to do. People often say to me, Bill, you know, can I move this finger over? Is it allowed? Anything's allowed as long as it's smooth and as long as it gets you where you want to go. Yeah. Um, something else I did a little bit later on, there is a chord in the score that looks like that. C sharp, E, A and a top E. Um, which is uh, quite difficult to play. And as you can see, because I've got dinky little hands, I can't quite reach the E. So what do I do there? If I want to play a big chord, but my hands aren't big enough. Something you can't do anything about. If you've got small, tiny, dinky little hands like mine, but there's just nothing you can do. Don't try stretching your fingers. Uh, that, that's what uh, Robert Schumann did, and he injured himself permanently. So what I do instead is what we call swing the chord like that, and again, use the um, keyboard, uh, the, the pedal to stick it together. Hold on, the piano's rocking a bit, let me put it back, there we go. 
So use a pedal to, to stick it together. So what I did there was this. Whoops. Okay, quite a straightforward movement, but it needs you to be accurate and to move again your whole arm. It's a lovely sound actually, just that chord. So if you want swing chords, if you've got something that's too big for you to, to play with your little hands, if you've got a huge hands then uh, you have a great luxury, uh, well done. Final little thing I want to look at is if you're playing arpeggios in the left hand and some of the fingering you can use there, which we see later on uh, in the Brahms here. Um, we've looked at arpeggios in the past, particularly I, I made a video about um, Adele singing um, that song, the name of which I've uh, forgotten. Not Rolling in the Deep, the other one. Anyway, search back in my timeline for uh, my video on arpeggios in Adele. Anyway, he says moving quickly on. Um, if you're playing a song that has a lot of arpeggios in the left hand, you can use some quite cool little finger techniques that we've seen here to move around smoothly. If you're arpeggiating between chords, sometimes it's tempting to, to jump but that can result in all sorts of problems with hitting wrong notes. So it's okay to, to use finger movement to get up and down. And that's what Brahms does here. In the left hand, right towards the end of the piece, um, we have this kind of movement. Okay, especially on tricky black notes, to move your fingers around, to use those techniques like finger switching to get yourself up and down. Just let me play that a little bit again to show you how he does it there. Whoops. Now, just there, interestingly, I mean, this will be an editorial thing in the score. Just there, there's a jump. Okay, sometimes you can't avoid them. Whoops. overall message I suppose that was a bit of a brain dump really uh, but it feels like a bit of a mess but the big overall message is be imaginative with your fingers and do what you can to use your fingers flexibly and imaginatively to get your hands up and down the keyboard smoothly without lifting on and off too much and all that sort of tedious mucking about with it which might result in you uh, splashing as you come back down um, the second moral of the story is if you have had some classical background revisit it yeah, if, even if you're only interested in playing pop or jazz or blues or whatever, dig out those old books of Bach or Brahms or Beethoven or whatever it was you did and just do a little bit and you will find it makes a massive difference, a huge difference to what you do. Yeah, so I play a lot of jazz and blues but I intersperse it with bits of Bach, with other, you know, other bits of classical music and I find that after I've played, you know, especially Bach, but any decent piano or keyboard composer, suddenly the way I use my fingers is reinvigorated, yeah? My fingers are much more flexible and imaginative and they can move all over the place. So there we go. Um, as usual, I'll give you a plug to my book, which I've left in the other room. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Here it is. How to really play the piano, the stuff your teacher never taught you. So if you're interested in jazz and blues and chords and things like that, this tells you the kind of basics of stuff you never... You never learnt in piano lessons um, about how to harmonise things and, and this, that and the other. And I'll include a link to the video. I never explain why I'm using my real piano, by the way. Uh, I might use it a bit more in the future because it's quite cool. I, I just cannot play classical music on a digital piano. Or, you know, at least difficult-ish classical music like the Brahms. I need the, the sort of light touch of, of my real piano. Um, so there we go. Any questions, comments, give me a shout. I'm catching up with a huge, huge, huge backlog of comments I'm afraid, I will get through them. You'll have noticed if you're a regular viewer that I haven't posted very much over the past couple of months, I'm afraid I've just been super busy with work, I'm trying to get back into it now. This is a bit of a start. So there we go, questions, comments, I will try to get back to you though, sometimes it will take me a few weeks. Phew! Right, that one was a bit of an epic, I uh, hope it was useful, and I will see you again soon. <laughs>